what is unique about the winner's family? I'll be sharing this with a sense of awe and expecting that as this water is steered, individuals will dive into it. What is unique about the winner's family? We use an anchor, an anchor scripture from Genesis 28 and verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. <laughs> verse 17. And he was afraid. And said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. The winner's family is today one of the strongest prophetic families on the earth. So the winner's family is a highly prophetic family. Running a divine pattern as delivered from heaven. As God privileged <coughs> laborer in this vineyard, I've seen God open new chapters to this commission, one after the other, <coughs> without missing words. This commission is ordained by its original mandate to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the, of the word of faith. And he said, I'm sending you to undertake this task. So he sent me as his undertaker. And the mandate is clear to get the devil off the back of everyone. So every mark of the devil on anyone in this house <coughs> must clear off tonight. Yeah. How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of hell. <coughs> but a prophetic family will not mean anything except with your faith on the line. A prophetic family will not deliver any value except with your faith. Whosoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive a prophet to the world. Matthew chapter 10. Quiet! Officials move out to that place and get out any devil from the place. Jesus could there do no mighty works. And they marveled at their unbelief. No matter the prophetic strength of a certain, it takes faith to draw value out of it. This 
This is not a human organization. This is the house of God. We are just running a prophetic agenda. That's why it's been so effortless. Because whatever God commands, God creates. We see that says, and it comes to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Whatever God says, God creates. So we are simply beneficiaries of God's continuing creation in our midst. And I want you to follow so as to make the most of this God-given opportunity to be in this family that is fulfilling a prophetic agenda. So men and women that will storm the world are ordained to rise from this family. This commission began in Quara State as directed by the Lord. And at the point I began to feel a pull to Kaduna. We were having the church ministry going and I saw that God's presence was always very thick than where we were at our, videos, at our fellowship center. And I said, God, what's happening? So my wife and I began to pray that morning and the Lord said, stand up. And I did. Take your Bible and I too. I took it and I believe he opened it because I didn't flip through any scriptures. And it was direct question we were asking. And I said, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord said, Arise and get down to Damascus. Acts chapter 22, verse 10. And there shall be told thee all things which are appointed for thee to do. So I tapped her and I said, Prayer is over. God has answered. We're on our way to Damascus, a city of persecution. Praise God. One day I was moving to the altar during our Easter convention, April 28, 1987, and I heard them say, it is time to spread out. And so the first five churches were planted. And so how God planted 5,000 churches this year. Come on, give the Lord praise. Every new chapter here opens up prophetically by the hand of God. I was in the bathroom when I heard Arise, get down to Lagos and raise me a people. It was so consistent, so irresistible, so compelling. That same day I had to dispatch someone down here to Lagos. And that's how we came to invade the city of Lagos. By the word of the Lord. Whatever word you hear from here, as spoken under this prophetic anointing, is yours for delivery if you are interested. Therefore, Breaking limits will become a reality in your life. Breaking limits will become a reality in your life. At Shiloh 2019, you shall be empowered into realms of breaking limits. You shall be baptized into realms of breaking limits in the name of Jesus there shall be no mountain that will stand before you anymore in your life every satanic barrier will be cleared in the way for you in the name of Jesus and so he brought us into Lagos I was on my way from Zaria, tired, hungry, having ministered. And suddenly, while in the car, the Lord said to me, The harvest of Africa is not overripe, rushing and preserving from the gardens. Now, 
These were not outcomes of council meetings. They were just prophetic agenda being unveiled. And so, Africa got invaded. This is a highly prophetic service a platform and devour to treasure every prophetic word that comes in your direction. Whatever God declares, God delivers where faith is in place. For blessed is he that believe it, for there shall be performance of those things who are told that from the Lord, from the Lord, from the Lord, whatever God can do, faith will make happen. Therefore, no prophetic war will be wasted in your life anymore. <laughs> it's not so much about the validity of the world because God's word is settled in heaven forever. But why are they not fulfilled in our lives? Because we have not come to the point of faith that will enable us to take delivery. The surest prophecy is a word. The, the Bible calls it the more sure word of prophecy. So it's not about, am I sure that is the truth? Okay, the truth of the truth, why is it not happening in your life? The ultimate truth is the word of God. Why is it not happening in your life and my life? Because our faith are, is out of place. Our faith is out of place. Now watch. Some things will happen in your life as an aftermath of Shiloh that 50 years of labor could not have made happen. Because the limit-breaking grace will be coming heavy upon your life. Yeah. You will know it. And all the people around you will know it. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Suddenly, May 2nd, 2015, the Almighty God came calling. We just had our liberation day service, and I was before the Lord. I didn't know, but there, there was such a presence around me. I couldn't lie down. I couldn't lay down. I couldn't sleep. I, and about evening time, I... The God of wonder double is visiting you. May 2nd, 2015. That turned the fortune of our church forever. Can I hear your amen? amen. The impossible took place by that visitation. Please understand that all these things were not drawn from council meetings or committee meetings. They were the unveiling of divine agenda. They were prophetic unveilings of divine agenda and they deliver as declared. Therefore, every word that comes in your direction from this night onward shall be delivered with speed. <laughs> shall be delivered with speed. They shall be delivered with speed. Now, the good news here tonight is you are not permitted to be tormented by any devil under this commission. I said, you are not permitted. Say, I'm not permitted to be tormented by any devil under this commission. I am not permitted. You know, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. Tonight, every captivity of Egypt holding anyone bound, I decree your liberty from them. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. 
We have never seen it, but we saw it this year because God said it. Who is it that says and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? He said, you plant 5,000 churches this year. I said, 5,000 churches? How? Where would the manpower come from? How do we get them? How can we mobilize that logistically? How do we prepare for it? He did it. Within five months, he completed it. Now, the good news is, whatever God says concerning you for the year 2019, will not cross over to 2020. It will not cross over to 2020. It will not cross over to 2020. April 10, 1982, the Lord said, at the base of this ministry, we'll build a tabernacle that will seat 50,000 people. 1982, the largest conference, maybe 1,000 people. And you will see the whole world came. The whole world came. 1982, 1982, who dash monkey banana? Where will any Christian organization get money to try it? How will it work? How many years will it take? In those days, we are a church of 500 capacity it will take about 10 years to complete. They multiply that. Everybody that saw it will have died. The first group, second group. <laughs> Amen. But God said it neatly. And when it was time, God did it in one year. Come and give the Lord praise. So we are sitting down inside fulfillment of prophecy. That's how real his agenda for this family is. Now, no budget, no borrowing, no begging, no special forum meeting, yet he did it. Whatever God says, God creates. So whatever he has spoken concerning you, he won't struggle to make it happen. You believe it, it will create it. You believe it, it will create it. You believe it, it will create it. So tonight marks the end of your struggle to sing prophecies for faith. Every prophecy delivers absolutely by faith. Delivers what? Absolutely by faith. Absolutely by faith. Abraham believed God and became father to Isaac at 100 years. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. So whatever God has said concerning this year, concerning you, don't stagger. Be steadfast. Amen. Keep your faith alive. And you have committed God to create it. He created this building, no? He didn't build it. He created it. He created it by himself. He created it without any man taking the glory out of it. Now, in the name of Jesus, whatever I have spoken concerning you this year that you are yet to see, as you put out your faith tonight, he will create it for you. Your marital restoration will be created. Your business and career restoration will be created. Your dominion over all devils will be created. And in the name of Jesus Christ, tonight will mark the end of your struggling for survival. Let me hear your loudest, amen. That's where you are stepping into. Every new phase in this commission has always been passed down through his apostle till date. And I can tell you, you are in for the best of time. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like you to also know that behind the growth and expansion of this, church, of this church is Jesus. 
I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You find any church growing. Jesus is simply proving that is my church. I am the one behind the scene. I'm the one growing that church. Please note, not one of us must try to share the glory. It's a risk. Don't share the glory of the growth of this church, no matter where you are. If Paul plans and Apollo waters, it is the Lord that gave the increase. So every increase is the finger of God at work. First Corinthians 3, 6. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. No one can add to the church except God. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I, God, will multiply them. God is the multiplier. So every addition, every increase, every multiplication that we have seen thus far in our various churches, it is simply the finger of God at work. No one's commitment can multiply the church. No one's key can add to the church. Except the Lord builds the house, the labor that built it. The master builder of this church is Jesus. Why? It is his church. He told me very early, I will build my church, not your church. When is your church, you will build it, if you can. But I will only build my church. You never heard me say, my church in my life. Not I stopped saying it at the point, it has never come out of my mouth, because he told me he will only build this church. So behind the building of this church, the addition of disciples, the increases in number, the multiplication that we see is a proof that Jesus owns this church. Jesus does what? Owns this church. Jesus owns this church. That's why he's committed to building it. Now, listen to me. If this is Jesus' thing, then be careful. Then be careful. Then be careful. And know how to behave yourself in the house of God. Be careful. This is not a club. This is the church of Christ. Be careful in your service units. Be careful in your self fellowship. Meetings. Be careful in your zone. Be careful. Be, be careful. This is Jesus' is thing. Be careful. It's a hard thing to kick against the priest. Be careful. Be careful. Whosoever comes against this stone shall be broken in pieces. And upon whosoever is forced, he shall grind him to powder. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. It's a platform for your decoration. Don't let it become a platform for destruction. Be careful. You know the good news? Men and women are ordained to rise from this platform, the kind the world has never seen before. It has started. The kind the world has never seen before. And you are ordained to be one of them. Yeah. Don't let any devil play you out. You are ordained to be one of them. Yeah. Every bona fide winner 
who cares to believe in this prophetic platform must be listed in that army. Yeah. In Joel chapter 11 and verse 1, I mean Isaiah chapter 11, no, Joel 2, verse 1. Hear what he said. Concerning this end time church. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and shout an alarm, sound an alarm in my holy mountain and let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh and is nigh at hand. Now, what happens? A day of darkness and of gloomness, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither there shall be any more after it until the years of many generations. That's what made it an end time army. They have never been their kind, neither would there be any like them until the years of many generations. A fire deforest before them, and behind them a flame burning. The lamb before them is like the garden of Eden. And behind them a desolate wilderness. What a separation. Now, he said in verse 3, or verse 4, let's go to verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. As the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, so shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array. He's talking about an army. An army of the Lord. Before their faces. He said all people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Now they shall run like mighty men. And they shall climb like the wall. Like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And everyone on his path. And they shall not break their ranks. And if they fall upon the sword on their path, they shall not be wounded. Some strange order of men. You say, who are they? Verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army because his camp is very great and great is he that executed his word. God will keep performing his word at a rate never known before. God told me we are major players in this agenda. This assembly, this congregation, this commission is ordained to be a major player in this end time army. What that means is this. Things that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, we become the order of the day in the life of many winners. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your believing amen. Yeah. You see, the prophetic word you receive and believe is the one you are empowered to become. You don't receive and believe it, you can't experience it. Receive and believe and it's your turn to experience. One of my long time friends was at Covenant University matriculation today for her last uh, bones uh, matriculation. And he said, I met this man 41 years ago. We got together 41 years ago. And according to him, the things I was saying, there are not things that many of them were thinking about yet. So he wasn't surprised that things are happening. He said, if I have 12 children, all of them will come to this university. Said, you better receive and believe it. When I saw that God was going to stir up jealousy by his acts among his people, I received it. I believed it. 1977. He said, they found what was written of him. Everything in the book is written of whosoever believes. Everything. Please don't close your destiny. No. The land before them is like the Garden of Eden. And behind them a desolate wilderness. And yet nothing shall escape them. 
that is express dominion unchallengeable dominion ever breaking for dominion that's your portion from now <laughs> somebody believe that let me hear your loudest amen <laughs> the good news is you never never lose your place in destiny that's why whatever it will take, give it to it. Don't let no devil play you out of your inheritance. Whatever it will take, give it. God has a place for you in his plan, but it takes your faith and practical commitment to the demands thereof to experience it. In the name of Jesus, your place in this glorious end time army shall not be sold to carelessness. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. It shall not be sold to carelessness. Yeah. And I will conclude by this. All oh, by the grace of God, I have never, never stood here one time in 38 years to cajole you. To make a make-believe statement to impress you. All by grace. I've never said once God said when I knew he didn't say. Yes, as human, I might misunderstand him. I have done that once or twice or three times or ten times. But that I deliberately said this is what God said when I knew that's not what he said. You know why God is still here? This is not a lying altar. This is not a lying altar. He said, He that walketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my presence. I, I can't cope with liars. That's what he's saying. So 101 and verse 7. Not once have I said one thing to bamboozle anybody in my life. And I've not spoken for any man. Now somebody come, please help me say this. I'm not one of the prophets that can be hired. No. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. Whatever God cannot take me to, may I never go there. Whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. I must tell you this, God's people. Not once have we sat to decide which way to go. God tells me what to do by time. And he has never misled us. Come on, give the Lord praise. <laughs> leadership of the greatest corporation cannot compare with leadership in the smallest church. You just must lie with his agenda or he turns his back on you. You just must lie with his agenda or he turns his back on you. No, anointing is a substitute for his instruction. We have followed his instruction till day and he has not stopped decorating us. The good news is, as you line up with his plan and purpose as laid out in his word, and under this prophetic anointing, you never miss your steps in life. <laughs> Give the Lord the biggest clap offering.